Well, welcome to our session today on strategic leadership principles. And today I want to speak to you on achieving small wins. Great achievements happen by achieving one thing at a time. Always start with the doable. Often the, the initial enormity of the task overwhelms us as we commence the process of leading change. We become fearful when confronted with solving so many big problems. We wonder how on earth we're going to do it and where do we start? Well, the answer is start with the doable. One of the mistakes that we make as leaders is we think we have to do everything at once, which is impossible. Strategic leaders deliberately cultivate the strategy of achieving small wins by breaking the problems down to small, doable tasks. They begin by identifying something that people feel they can successfully accomplish with their existing skills and resources. Now, the benefits of breaking and change down into small, doable tasks is captured in a story I read by Causes and Bosner's book, The Leadership Challenge. It's about a school superintendent in the United States who was the 10th superintendent in eight years in the schools. 50% of the schools in the district were closed down and those that were open were rat infested. Buckets were kept in classrooms to catch the rain leaking through decrepit roofs. The stench from the toilets was overwhelming. 90% of the children were performing below their academic standard. And there was a 10 year lawsuit hanging over the school district and the district received the lowest state funding. What did the school superintendent do in the face of this hopeless situation? Well, she started to do things that were within her control, that were tangible and doable, and that would get the ball moving. Well, firstly, she recruited volunteers from an engineering company to repair the wiring and to fix the telephone system. She then enlisted volunteers to paint the classroom and to shoot rats with pellet guns. She employed a local hardware stores to donate supplies. Now, as the signs of the superintendent's small wind became visible, more and more people joined the team of volunteers. Parents and school teachers alike joined until the superintendent had 350 volunteers. People brought troy, trees and furniture. Others asked the name of the colors used in the school so they could paint their houses with the same color in support of the school. The superintendent recognized that the way to accomplish an impossible task was to break it down into small doable tasks. Now doing the doable allows for immediate success. The superintendent said concerning the task when winning at the beginning was so important. This is true not only at the beginning, but also all, through, all the way through the project. Once as a dean of, of a Bible college, I was faced with a seemingly huge problem of raising finances for a building project. Now a friend of mine gave me this advice. She said, Tony, people don't support worthy causes, they support successful causes. Now this small word of advice proved itself over and over again in many situations. I've learned that success uplifts people's spirits and they want to join in. The message of success was sent by each little victory of the superintendent's volunteers over leaky roofs, ramps and paint peeling off the building. People wanted to join in. See, success is like a magnet. It pulls people to the project and increases their commitment to the project. Why? It draws people because small wins help build confidence and reinforce the natural desire to feel successful. What is interesting is that each small win locks into place another building block of transformational change, making it increasingly difficult to return to the pre-existing condition of the organization. Now, small wins sustain our commitment to the project. The superintendent understood that life was full of interruptions and those interruptions break our commitment to the task. I mean, how many times have you tried to count a hundred or a thousand objects one at a time and lost count because you've been interrupted? After a while, you, your, your commitment to the task starts to wane and you may even give up and walk away in disgust feeling you cannot complete the task. Yet how much easier it is that if we count the objects in groups of 10 and if we're interrupted we have still accomplished something. 
All the time people can see concrete, consistent patterns of winning in the midst of interruptions of life, they will stay committed to the task, no matter how daunting. Now what's exciting about this process is that once small wins have been accomplished, the natural forces are set in motion that favour stepping out towards another small win. You know, God is delighted to see us moving out doing the doable. This is seen in the encouraging words to Zechariah. When God saw the plumb line in the hand of Zechariah and he began to uh, what seemed to be an overwhelming task of rebuilding the temple for God, God spoke these words to Zechariah in chapter 4, verse 10. For who shall despise the day of small beginnings? The words of encouragement are not only spoken to, over Zechariah's life, but they're spoken over our lives. If we set about doing the doable in God, we will generate a process of success of small wins that will enable us and others to accomplish great achievements for God in this life. Thank you for listening to us today. May God bless you.